Hi there, everyone. This is Erwin Huesma, Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems, here to show you part two in our multi-part series on the injection mold design process within SolidWorks. If you were with us last time, we showed the RC car that we're working with, as well as this part, which we cleaned up a little bit to make ready for the injection molding process. So in this video, I just want to show you some of the tips and tricks that we can use to kind of speed up our, our whole design cycle. One of the most important things that we need to do is make sure that we can run a proper parting line. Um, I'm going to run a draft analysis here to find any what we call straddle faces. So I'm just going to define my top plane as my pull plane. One degree of draft is what I'm looking for. And there's a really nice tool called face classification where SOLIDWORKS will define all of these faces as either positive or negative draft, requiring draft, or a straddle face. Now SOLIDWORKS when it sees a face that requires draft, it doesn't necessarily classify it as a straddle face. So we just got to keep a close eye on that. In this case, I'm going to accept and keep on working with this draft analysis on. And I'll run a split line command with an intersection type split based on the top plane. And I'm going to split all of these faces that I see here. I'm not going to forget up front here and this may not make total sense right now, but we're going to explain why we're just running the split line through the center in a future video. And what you'll see is that the face classification updates in live real time. So I never have to worry about that. These faces are no longer straddle faces. I'm going to turn off draft analysis and I'll show you a trick that we can use with parting lines. Again, define a pull plane with your degrees of draft. And SOLIDWORKS tries to do its best to find the parting line at it that it feels fit here. Now, it doesn't always do the best job. Uh, in fact, I'm going to have to trim this up. So I could go ahead and find these edges. But instead, I'll show you a neat little trick because sometimes you have to do this manually. If we select one edge, you'll see a little red arrow pop up. And using some shortcuts or these buttons on the left here, we can actually add the selected edge that it it's previewing for us in yellow there, or we can switch to the next edge. These two buttons also have shortcuts Y and N for presumably yes and no. So if I like that edge, I'll hit yes, 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 yes. And here it's gone a little bit sideways. So we just got to tune it into shape, hit no a couple times, and we can select all these edges. So in the interest of saving time, I'm not going to go through all of this. I have a completed part. So we'll just flip over to that guy. And here's my parting line. Now this parting line, if you ever don't want to see it, up in your hide show menu items, we can turn off our parting lines with this button right here. And it'll just hide it. One nice trick that you can use in here is to uh, make a parting surface, which I'm going to do that with my planar surface here using this sketch. And I can actually trim it out using that parting line, provided that it's actually coincident with the surface. So here, I'm going to use my Surfaces tool, Trim Surface, use my parting line as my Trim tool, and I'm going to, just going to keep this outside selection. And I have a really quick and easy parting surface. Of course, I could have always used my parting surfaces tool, but sometimes you just need to do it this way. I hope that's uh, helpful. If you are looking for more tips and tricks, please stay tuned into the uh, Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like, and we'll have plenty more content just like this for you. And we'll also finish up this multi-part series on the injection mold design process. Thanks again, and take care.